What's up YouTube, this is Galacticod, and welcome to another one of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Q&A episodes. Now I'm going to get things kicked off with a video response question from Classic Hank. Alright guys, what's up, it's Classic Hank here. I'm just going to be doing a quick video response to Galacticod. Uh, so my question is, what is your favorite format? Because a lot of people are saying that the diversity and or just all the decks that are topping at YCSs right now uh, make this format the best format. Uh, personally, I'm kind of mixed on that. I think a lot of decks uh, topping is interesting. I think it definitely makes the game more fun. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes for the best game, though, uh, because there are still some decks that have more of an advantage over others. There are still you know, issues with like you know bad matchups, good matchups. It, it becomes less of a matter of skill, I think, it, and more of you know, what kind of matchup you're getting. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, it's Classic Inc. signing out. Now, a lot of people always talk about what their favorite format is. Uh, a lot of YouTubers bring up, you know, the Go Control format. They bring up Teledad. Um, all these kind of formats that were considered uh, really great for pro players, really great for people who were super intense into the game because it required a lot of skill. Essentially, everybody played basically the same deck. And um, so it didn't really require so much about... Uh, how good your side deck options were because everybody played the same side deck. Everybody played the exact same deck. Everybody had the exact same options. So there was really only skill and kind of the luck of the draw of which order you were going to draw your cards into. Uh, but that played kind of a little minimal part because if you were a really good player, you could actually duel your way out of just about any bad hand. Um, so the luck factor only really played any small portion when you were dueling another really good player. Um, with that kind of all said, uh, to me, my favorite format, you know, always goes back probably to the first format that I played in, which was before BLS, a Chaos Emperor Dragon, and all these kind of busted ass cards came out. I've been playing the game for an extremely long amount of time, and for me, when I think of Yu-Gi-Oh!, when I think about, you know, my favorite format, when I think about when I had the most fun playing, I always think about to when I started. When I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! when it was still uh, very new and very, uh, uh, I don't know, when I was very noobish into the game and, you know, I, I did cards with, you know, I, I made noobish mistakes and read cards wrong and, uh, you know, dueled incorrectly. That, to me, um, was probably the best time playing. Uh, since I learned the game, though, uh, and become, you know, more competitive, become more into the game, become more into how the game should be played and how the structure of it is, I've always found, um, I don't know, I guess my favorite format was probably, I don't want to say this format, although I do personally like the diversity of the format. I like the fact that when I go to an event, I'm not going to play the same deck over and over again. I like the fact that when I go anywhere and play, or even if I go on DN and play, it's not the same deck over and over again. I like diversity in the format. Um, so that's one of the things that I truly do love about this format, and I like that. I, I mean, I know a lot of pro, pro players really hate that, but to me it's really good. But other than this current format, I think my favorite format was probably the last big Synchro Era format, right before Exceeds hit, um, when plants were really popular. Um, a lot of people don't like that format, they didn't like plants too much, but I actually really enjoyed the plant deck and, the, and everything, and I thought that that was a really cool format to be a part of, and it, it required a decent amount of skill because a lot of people were playing the same plant deck, but it wasn't the only deck. And I personally like the whole plant engine. I like the Synchro engine. Uh, in general, I love playing Synchrons. And I think that might be why I still like that format quite a bit. Black22886 asks, Will Konami still make tuner monsters for their Synchro monsters? Um, and I don't think they're going to continue to make tuner monsters. A lot of the tuner monsters we see released in our new TCG sets or um, OCG imports, meaning they had already come out in the OCG for quite a while, and we're just now getting them here in the TCG. And then, of course, our TCG exclusives, which, you know, the guys over here come up with for, you know, our TCG stuff. And um, then they just kind of import them over there. But I think for a core set itself, I can't imagine them coming up with any more tuners, um, any more synchros, really. Uh, it's just hard to think that, you know, with Konami wanting to push synchros out, that they're going to come up with new tuners to help synchros. Because Shadow and Yusei asks, if someone was to ask you to help them become a big in Yugi tubing, would you help them, 
um, or would you only help them if you thought that they showed potential and they were really trying on their channel? I try and help as many people as I can. I know a lot of people um, want to be become bigger YouTubers, want to get really big in the YouTubing community. It's a, a dream that a lot of people have and um, being a YouTuber and a bigger YouTuber is actually really cool. It's really fun. You know, it's a lot of work, but it's it's awesome being, uh, you know, a, a bigger YouTuber, I think. Uh, I try to help as many people as I can. I do like uh, YouTubing shout out videos where I showcase their channel and, uh, you know, kind of give them a second to, you know, show what they have to offer to the community. I do subscriber showcases. Uh, those are for people whose channels I've already been watching for uh, a while myself. Uh, they're, they range from smaller channels up to the really bigger ones. Um, and just kind of, that's kind of a showcase that, you know, sub count doesn't really matter for the content of the channel you know, or at least when people judge the channel that big channels are just as good as small channels and, um, you know, I try and range it like that. I've done, you know, interviews and stuff for smaller channels as well as bigger ones and, but to kind of answer your question, uh, I try and help as many people as I really can. Um, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and, and much of my day is taken up with other things, with school, work, and all this stuff that I have going on. Um, you know, plus I try and post up daily content as well that, you know, there's only so much, you know, time I have to give to people. But, you know, that said, I do enjoy trying to help the smaller channels. I do trying to help anybody that kind of comes to me and asks me to, like, hey, can you take a look at my deck? Or, hey, can you uh, take a look at my channel? Or take a look at this video? Or can I get a shout out? I try and respond to as much as that I can, trying to do as much as I can. But one of the, the big things that I think, you know, that I hold as kind of a requirement is that you are a consistent poster on your channel. I don't like subscribing to channels myself who only post up videos like once a month or something. Um, usually I end up unsubscribing to those people because, you know, I want to see videos. I want to, if I subscribe to you, I want you to actually post. And if I'm going to help someone, I want them to be consistent. And that's kind of really the one of the major requirements that I have. Sporks14 asks, have you ever tried Dino Rabbit or would you ever consider playing Dino Rabbit? Um, I've actually never played uh, myself, played the Dino Rabbit deck in real life. I don't actually own Cabasols or Sabersauruses. It was kind of weird. I owned every other part of the deck, all the expensive stuff, uh, but the common normal vanilla monsters I don't own. Actually, I don't own a playset of each. Actually, I have own one Cabasol and one Sabersaurus, but I don't have a playset, so I can't really play Dino Rabbit. Uh, I mean, it can't be that hard to go out and get the cars, they're too expensive, but the deck is really, looks, you know, really cool and really fun, but I've never had a burning desire to play it. Typically, a lot of decks that are super meta, um, I don't know if I, I, I shy away from them, um, you know, consciously or subconsciously or whatever, but I tend to, to play more of a rogue deck, especially when I'm playing, you know, with uh, my buddies and stuff. I mean, they don't want to play, you know, super meta unless, you know, they're testing for... Uh, an event or something, uh, but me personally, I've always tried to play the tier two, tier one point five decks. I think those are a little bit more fun to play. They usually give you a little bit more variety. I have nothing against Dino Rabbit. I've played like, a weird Gym Knight Rabbit deck that I was testing for like a while, but I've never actually played Dino Rabbit. I probably will eventually. I mean, I like to play just about every kind of deck there is. I have a huge collection, so eventually I get around to making every deck. Garchomp165 asks, have you ever met Simply Unlucky? Uh, unfortunately, I have never met him. I think he lives in Northern California, and I'm out here in Southern. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where he's located, really, but I think that's what I heard him say in one or two of his videos. I know he was at the 100th YCS, but so was, like, you know, five, 6,000 other people, and I just never met him there. Uh, hopefully, maybe when they have the next big YCS event down here in Southern California, he comes, and maybe I can meet him then. It would be really cool. You know, I love watching, you know, his videos just like, you know, the the 50,000 plus other people out there, too. Uh, hopefully one day I'll get to meet him and, you know, talk to him and all that kind of stuff. Gary Mod Mystic asks, have you ever dueled against any other YouTubers at YCSs? I've only been to, like, a handful of YCSs, and the last one I went to was the one in Long Beach down here in Southern California, and I didn't actually duel against any YouTubers. I did meet quite a bit of them that were there, you know, Slim X Team Symmetry, I got to meet Crow Cresta, Underworld 6667, Draco DMD, Vayu Enthusiast, uh, Mecha Jayun. A lot of people that I got to see and meet there was really kind of cool, but I didn't actually duel against them. Uh, I was hoping maybe to take the Crow Cresta Hero Challenge, but that didn't happen either. 
Uh, it was cool getting to meet a bunch of them. I have dueled quite a bit of Yu Gi Tubers on DN, uh, which was really fun. Um, always like, uh, you know, dueling them. Uh, I think I have a duel video up on my channel actually of me dueling um, Mega Capital G, which is cool. So if you ever like to see me duel any other, you know, Yu Gi Tubers, uh, you know, go message them on their channel and say, hey, duel Galactic God on DN, and maybe we'll put it up on, uh, you know, the channel as well. Bionicle Self Mollus asks, why don't you ship internationally? Uh, he's talking mostly about my eBay page, I'm assuming, although I don't really trade internationally anymore either. I used to ship internationally and I kept having issues. You can't put tracking numbers on stuff you ship internationally unless you go through like UPS or something and then your tracking cost you know, expands exponentially. Like it gets super high expensive to get tracking number on something shipped internationally. Uh, you know, if the, you know, the person says they never got their package, you have to provide, you know, tracking info so that, you know, eBay knows that you actually did send it and that it actually got to them. But when you ship internationally, you can't provide that unless you charge an abnormally large amount for shipping. And I kept getting people saying they didn't get their stuff. And I couldn't prove that they got it. And so I would refund them their money. And it had happening over and over again. I don't know if the mail services overseas are just really bad or if people are lying, <laughs> you know. And so to just avoid that problem altogether, you know, I just stopped shipping internationally. Same thing with trading too. People would say they never got their item or whatever the case may be. And it just became more of a problem to trade internationally. Uh, I remember one time too, I traded like a $4 card uh, for another $4 car for someone, um, I forget where, I think Australia, I think. Um, then I went to go, I got his item, his card, and then I went to go mail my $4 card back to him, and the shipping cost was $4, and I was like, man, I could have just bought this $4 card off of eBay and then kept my card. Now, <laughs> you know, so it doesn't, sometimes it's not really cost effective either to trade that way, and with so many problems I kept having with shipping off of my eBay account and whatnot, I just, you know, kind of gave up on it. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode's Q&A. If you guys would like to, you can leave me a video response question, and I will play that video before I answer it, kind of similar to what I did with Classic Hank in this video here. Otherwise, you guys can always leave me questions down in the comment section below, and I will answer those questions in my next Q&A video. And I guess that's it for now. This is Galactic God, out.